It's great to be here in Unbound. I want to thank the Unbound people, uh, Chairman Vardy and uh, Danny Kelev Yam and the entire crew for inviting me. Always a great opportunity, always a good excuse to visit Miami. And in the next few minutes, will be very, very short, I want to tell you a little about the future of this thing called content. Content, you know, is news, information, articles, all the stuff that we read. And it's we spend the majority of our day holding this little device in our hand and consume content, right? Let me start by showing you a little photo. I have to warn you in advance, it's a little bit of a disturbing photo. It's a photo of you. This is what you guys look like when you read content. Familiar, right? Uh, it could be you or me or everyone. Honestly, the majority of content consumption today happens in circumstances that are more or less like what you see in the picture. Uh, we do it on a small device. We do it while we're focused on other stuff. We don't really have the full attention to content uh, that we used to have in the early days. And this device, this cell phone, you know, it's a very interactive piece of technology. We are constantly doing stuff with it. I mean, nobody ever held a newspaper and smiled to it, right? Or, or uh, did all those clicking and swiping and switching and everything. Cell phones by nature are interactive and it's also a communication device. Most of what we do with our cell phone, for instance, social media, or messaging or games is all about communication. It's all about transmitting something, doing something and getting feedback. Always getting some sort of an answer to what we do. Which by the way is, uh, uh, applies not only to interactive components but also things that used to be static. For instance, photos. Back in my day, you know, I'm not, I'm not as young as I look like, photos used to be a very static thing. You used to take a photo and then you would put it in an album and maybe once a year or once in 10 years you would pull it out and look at it. Today, thanks to cell phones, even photos turned into something very visual, uh, moving, changing, interactive. You do stuff with it. You apply emojis and filters and stickers on it. You send it. You get likes back. It turned into something that is really all about interactivity and communication. Another example is maps, something that used to be extremely static and today maps is something that we drop pins on and we uh, share locations, we calculate routes, we communicate with other people and, and put experiences on, uh, on map as if it was a timeline. So everything we do on the cell phone is very interactive and all about communication and really this is the addictive element about it. So when people tell us that we spend all of our day with this device, you can see, you know, you can see all those uh, stats on the, uh, on the board. Really, the, uh, the fact that it's so interactive and so communicative is the basis for what makes it so addictive. Now, all of that, for some reason, doesn't apply to content because today's articles on cell phones, not only do they look exactly like they used to look like 10 years ago on a desktop computer, they actually kind of look the same as they did 500 years ago when print was invented. So the world moved from newspapers to cell phones, but the world of content really stayed where it was 500 years ago. It didn't evolve. And even today, the majority of the content that is written for you guys to consume is written in the exact same way that it was written hundreds of years ago. Even though the consumers are not the same people of 500 years ago, and the device and the technology and everything else is not the same. And that creates uh, an opportunity, a challenge, uh, and, uh, and something that, uh, that we're trying to address. So basically, it will be no surprise to you that because of the fact that content hasn't evolved, it's also not very consumable. And people spend an average of less than 15 seconds on a web page, meaning that they don't really read. Somebody was writing this content and people, you know, maybe the statistics are gonna say that it had one million views or uh, 500 million views. But that doesn't mean that people actually read it. People really don't read because they expect something interactive. They have very short attention span. They're used to do stuff that immediately reflects back and gets them feedback. And that doesn't exist on content. So for us at Playbus, the company that I co-founded six years ago, the challenge was how to understand the future of content or how to bring content to the present and make it as interactive, as visual, as snackable, as fun and engaging as all the other applications that we have on our phones. And really what we did is we created a content authoring platform that enables to create content that looks like this. 
Uh, from the get-go, even, even though you can't read the fine print, you can see that it's not your ordinary, ordinary looking content. It's content that is very visual, that comes in small chunks, so it's more digestible for people who are not, no longer accustomed to read long articles. Uh, it's very interactive by nature, and most of it even looks like, uh, like chat threads. So it makes the content seem more like a conversation. No longer publishers talk at their users, now they're talking to their users. It's more of an exchange than a one-sided uh, broadcasting. Uh, and the results are really staggering in terms if you measure the user engagement. So our platform is being used by no less than 13,000 different publications all over the world. Uh, in the United States, it can be the likes of uh, MTV, Huffington Post, Major League Baseball. Uh, in the UK, it's the BBC and Sky and Telegraph and Mirror. So, you know, really premium publishers all over the world. And when they create content with us, they make the content not only look more current, but also achieve great results in terms of user engagement and interest. Same goes for advertising. You know, we all see so many ads on our phones, but very rarely do we ever click on one, at least not intentionally. And very rarely do we even remember which ads we saw because we've learned to ignore them. We either block them or we just develop what you call banner blindness. We don't even see the ads anymore. So we developed a way to create uh, commercial content that is actually fun, that is more like a game. It's more interactive, it's more snackable, it's kind of a communication uh, experience, and it makes the content itself be more effective as advertising and more interesting. Where do we go from here? So we're talking about the future of content, and one of the words that you hear a lot is video. And video is very obvious because for uh, about, I don't know, I guess about 100 years now, video is the most engaging form of content consumption in the world. It started with cinemas, evolved into television, and now it's coming to, uh, to our very own pocket, to the very own palm of our hand. Uh, I think that the challenge with video today is that you see content, in every content article you see online, people, their publisher always puts videos on it because they want to generate uh, video advertising revenue. But in reality, they don't really have video content that's suitable for this article, so they're kind of like forcing whatever video they have in their inventory as long as they can shove a video in and they can, you know, put another ad. And this doesn't make sense. So what we did and what we're developing is the ability for an author, for a journalist, to create video as part of their story. Not just marry unrelated videos into their narrative, but really create, construct video, take video footage and take images and take uh, all sorts of visual objects and compile them together into a video that's actually going to be native to the story they're writing. Another important uh, element is data. We all, you know, we constantly hear about data, and frankly, data is pretty boring. I mean, you know, trust me, you should see the people at Playbuzz that deal with data. These are very, very boring people. Uh, but they're doing something really important, because uh, what they do is they take the guessing game out of the creative process. They enable people to treat the out of content, the out of storytelling, the out of communicating with other people, into something that's not only about art, it's also about science. And you can really very, very scientifically measure how people engage with content. So for instance, if you wrote an article and most people stopped reading it after two paragraphs, maybe it's something you can learn from. Maybe it sends you a signal that this article should be shorter or maybe you should break the narrative with an image or a poll or another interactive component. So the goal is to create content that is driven by data to give the content creators data tools and to teach and edu educate them how to use data feedback in order to optimize the engagement of their content to make it more interesting. Uh, really, you know, what we want to see is we want to see situations like this. We want to see people uh, falling into fountains in malls, not because they're, um, uh, you know, swapping candies in a game or something like that, but because they're actually engaged with content. So the goal is to make content that really reaches people, uh, that really uh, makes them interested, because as you know and well aware, when people are not paying too much attention to content, they're very easily distracted. It's very, easily, it's very easy to influence them. It's very easy to provide them what we call fake news or unauthorized information. It's very easy to change their minds. It's very easy to manipulate them. And the key to all of that uh, or to avoid all of that is to really create content that is 
uh, adjustable to the new consumers and to the new settings uh, in which people cre uh, create and consume content today. I promise you it's going to be short and I deliver. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of Unbound. Thank you very much, Saul. Always a pleasure. Um, next up, we're